to heat up your frozen dinners, grab your TV tray, and settle in for another episode of The Plus Platoon, your podcast for all things Disney Plus, brought to you by Disney Plus fans. Watch along with us every week as we cover all the new, the old, the good, and the bad on Disney Plus. So put down that remote, don't touch that dial, and welcome your fabulous Plus Platoon host. Welcome, everyone. We are the Plus Platoon. We're a Disney Plus fan podcast that gives honest, spoiler-filled reviews of movies and shows on Disney Plus. We'll look at new releases, coming attractions, and we'll even go back into the vault to revisit some of the classic Disney that's on the platform. Make sure you're subscribed, and you will never miss a moment. I'm going to bring in my girl, Kate. Kate, how are you doing this evening? Vroom, vroom, vroom! I'm so good. That was really lame. Sorry. That was really lame, but... It fits, yeah. but I'm very good. I'm good. I'm with my tuner family, you know. Can't yeah. beat it. Next, we have got Peter. Pete, how's your evening? Oh, I'm doing great. This is All fun right. whenever we do a, a vault show, so I'm excited to talk about cars. Yeah. And last but certainly not least, we've got Sam. Sam, good to see you. Kachow. Good to see all of you. Oh, that's what I should have done. <laughs> Kachiga. <laughs> Great to see you guys. I'm wearing a Disneyland shirt tonight, as you can kind of see. Yeah. It's a, this is Disneyland because I realized I don't have any Cars t-shirts. Isn't that kind of weird? I don't it either. Is, I don't yeah. know. Are we grading on a curve based on this crew? <laughs> how weird it is. Fair enough. Fair um, enough. I feel like we we all have so much Disney gear though so much disney merch it is weird yeah merch i like to call yeah. it yeah. <laughs> no, if, we, if we were talking die cast cars i go grab my sons and we have literally all of the cars vehicles S same except i gave a bunch of them away just a couple of months ago so we we don't have oh. nearly as many as we used to we literally How had every single that? character oh we had we had so we went so? through and did kind of a toy purge we got That's rid of a bunch of stuff coats are for so yeah we had we had a lot of cars and a lot of other cars like those die cast cars but we also yep. had a lot of other cars toys Okay. We had a lot of uh what's the the bad guy in uh, cars three we had that that guy too we got rid uh, of him stormy w no storm yeah storm something in cars three yeah yeah storm something it is storm, storm something yeah storm something anyway yeah well guys if you have not already please like subscribe share us on facebook youtube everywhere so that you will always get notified whenever we do anything new like or old like tonight's show but First, Kate, we've got some Disney Plus news. What have we got going on we this week? Do. Before we jump into Disney Plus news, though, I would like it to be known that the one toy that I always wanted to play with and get into as a kid was Hot Wheels cars. And <laughs> I never did because I was an only child. And for some reason, I never got Hot Wheels cars. And also, I did grow up a little bit with NASCAR because Carl Edwards went to my high school. So oh, that's cool. I know. Pretty cool. Ran into him in the hallway. It was weird. All right. So Disney Plus <laughs> news. I gotta scroll back a little bit. All right. Up in the Disney Plus news. First of all, Andor will be released on September 21st with three episodes. This is a pushback from the original release date, but still keeps the finale at the same time. Interesting. Uh, and they next did, up. And actually, oh, Kate, they, did bring, they did bring out a trailer this week. And I will say Disney knows how to make show trailers make the show look interesting so. it's it's definitely an excellent trailer and um you get a very like a lot of really interesting scenery and stuff like that it it seems very epic and bootstrap Scope, bill's so. in it so you know bootstrap bill the actor yeah the actor who played bootstrap bill in uh pirates of the caribbean oh is, stellan skarsgård yes thank you i couldn't never pronounce his name Yes. So, is that Bill Turner? Is that Orlando Bloom's dad? Yes. No. Well, in yes. in the movies, yes. So yes. Okay. He's, 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 he's also selving in the Thor slash Avengers movies. He's also in Mamma Mia. This is me this trying is to true. do the eyebrow wave. It's not working. All right. Anyway, <laughs> moving right along. Oh, here's Mater. Cars, 
On the Road will be a series of shorts following Mater and Lightning McQueen as they cross the country to attend the wedding of Mater's sister. Uh, these look to be in the same vein as the Mater's ta tall tail shorts. Which were cute. Which were I, cute. I, yes. I need to share this because this is the this is actually a popcorn bucket, you guys. 10th anniversary of Cars Land popcorn mm -hmm. bucket. Wow. <laughs> Gotta love me some Mater. I passed because the day I showed up, the line was about 40 people deep. Yeah. So. Fair. All right. Next up, um, Disney and Marvel have confirmed that the Secret Invasion series will involve appearances from characters from across the MCU, including from other Disney Plus series. <gasps> that could be interesting. Yeah. That's just thing. This, this, well, this is the their first official, like, we crossover crossover thank you that was the term i was looking for the first yeah. official crossover event is going to be secret invasion because the whole idea behind it is you're going to have to figure out which actors are actually the characters and which actors are scrolls oh right. so we don't know if thing. it's like ms ms marvel or if or she's a scroll pretending to be ms marvel exactly right. very interesting just an update for anyone who was following along that kate and casey are watching through the entire marvel cinematic universe we just finished season two of jessica jones we are now on to the second half of season five of agents of shield and the next movie we are set to watch is ant-man and the wasp I think nice you're pretty far along yeah now. we're talking through and the next movie after ant-man and the wasp is infinity war so yeah we are trucking through and last you'll catch up in like what like six months or so <laughs> at, least, at least um last up disney has released the plot of all five i am groot episodes we aren't going to reveal them here but they are out there if you want to go looking for them we will be looking at the shorts when they premiere in a couple of weeks and if you want to make it really cute the way that casey and i met he was star lord or was friends with star lord at walt disney world and i was friends with baby groot so oh i did not so know we got a, that we got a picture of kate as i am groot I will someday no, I'll we'll really we'll post on the um plus platoon Instagram and stuff. We'll post a picture of it. It's cute. But anyway, that's it for the Disney Plus News. Well, thank you, Miss Kate. Mm -hmm. Okay, this week we are diving back into the vault. We're going back to 2006 with the release of the original cards. This is a long uh, time ago, you guys. It was a long time ago, but I thought it was actually older than that. In a so, galaxy far, far away. No, wrong series. Wrong series. <laughs> oh, wait. We're not doing Marvel or Star Wars this week? I'm really confused. Wild. What are we doing with ourselves? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> the return to sanity. Um, the return we're do to we're Pixar. doing something that actually sells more merchandise than those. Do. No, probably not anymore. But <laughs> Maybe, not, yeah. Not anymore, well, but at the time, it probably did. Yeah. Yeah. They did sell a lot. Yeah. Okay. So, Cars. Cars it follows the, career, the story of Lightning McQueen is going for the Piston Cup Championship. And he is in his last, the, it's the last race of the season at what has been dubbed Motor Speedway of the South. For any racing fans, it's basically Bristol Motor Speedway, which is a half mile concrete. It's known for its wrecks. It's known for having stands almost to the sky. Okay. He decides that he has now fired his third crew chief of the year and he can work alone. So his crew ends He's up. He's a quitting, prima donna. He's a uh, prima donna to the highest level. Yeah, for sure. Um, so he ends up deciding that he knows better than everything else. He's going to win by a long ways. Last lap, blows two tires. The last lap ends up in a tie between him, between excuse me, between he and the king and Chick Hicks. The king in this one actually, and we're going to get into voice talent a little later, is actually voiced by the king, Richard Petty. So for NASCAR fans out there. You say the king, there wasn't really anyone else that could have had voice it but Richard Petty. So it's going to be a tie, and they're going to have a tiebreaker race in one week in California because it doesn't make, you know, it makes too much sense to have them actually just do it in the same stadium. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> right. And right. as you mentioned Carl Edwards, as he found out, in reality, there are tiebreaker scenarios for championships, and it would not have gone extra. But that is neither here nor there. Chick and Lightning are going to race across because since the King is retiring, Dynaco, the sponsor, is up for grabs, and the first one to get to California gets to stay with Dynaco. 
gets to talk to Dynaco first. And so they go. Lightning wants to race across the country. His truck hauler, Mac, hauls him all the way across. He's hauling him across the country. Lightning says, no, don't stop. Don't stop. I'll stay up with you all night. Mac fall, Lightning falls asleep. Mac drifts off. Lightning gets dumped out of the trailer and ends up following the wrong truck to Radiator Springs. Ta-da. Because he doesn't have any lights. He only has stickers for lights. Uh, oh, come on. You <laughs> ruined the joke. You know, don't just go like the crack is always lit. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that includes a great cameo by uh, Click and Clack, the Tappet Brothers, as uh, the two cars that are his sponsors. Yeah, Dusty um, and Rusty. Yes. And so ends up in Radiator Springs, ends up tearing up the town, panics, and gets arrested. We have now arrived in Radiator Springs. And guys, this is a great place to talk about all the different voice talents in this movie. Because there are some amazing voice talents in the movie. Um, first, we have Lightning McQueen is Owen Wilson. Which, guys, uh, I think this brings up an this brings up an interesting point. Is this one of the multiverses? You've got. <laughs> he is my voice crush. He he, you know, he is in Loki. He is in. You know, I mean, my voice that's crush. True. And then when you look at, you've also got Sally. His love interest, for lack of a better term, is Bonnie Hunt, who is yep. in Toy Stories. She's in Bugs Life. She's in Zootopia. She's in Monsters Inc. She's, She's in everything every... Pixar, basically. Well, yeah. Pixar and Disney animation. Yeah. Yes. Because Zootopia is not Pixar. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. Kate, we've got Mater. Oh, my God. You know, we talked about, before we came on, we talked about who would possibly be our favorite character. And as soon as that idea got pitched, I was like, y'all better sit down because Mater, I call dibs on Mater. Mater is, he's voiced by Larry the Cable Guy. And he, I feel like in a roundabout way, there is a Mater type character in every movie. Mater Mm -hmm. is the lovable sidekick who is a little bit aloof. Maybe, I don't, I don't know what the word I want is, but like not the smartest tool in the shed, but will follow you into the unknown who will just Lo- like I no. <laughs> no, no. Love, I love I everything that. about Mater. It's pronounced like Toe Mater, except without the toe. Like I, j- he is such a lovable character. Um, everything about him to me, he makes the movie and i've always wanted to dive a little bit deeper into larry the cable guy and find out if that is an act or if that is really i i don't know um a lot, of, know, it is, a lot of it is an act a lot most of, it of it's is. an act yeah it's sure. his, it's his comedy act really sure yeah. and that's and it works it makes it sense mm-hmm. so um in my opinion Mater is what makes this movie. Mater, while I love Owen Wilson, Owen Wilson can read me the phone book and I will serve him grapes and strawberries, but I just, Mater is it for me. Larry the Cable Guy. Pete, what do you, who's, who are you going with? Pete, who, you've got probably the next one we've got on our list. And we just lost Pete. Oh, so, we lost Pete. So, how, the next, yeah. uh, next person we have on the list is Doc Hudson, voiced by the legendary Paul Newman. Yep. Paul Newman. And the reason, part of the reason this really fits for Paul Newman, he is a race car driver. He drives, or excuse me, drove sports cars. He drove all sorts of different race cars. He actually drove at 24 Hour Le Mans, which is a big sports car race. So, him being in this movie, yes, not only is he a legendary voice, but he is truly a actually a race car driver. So that's actually how, you know, him. And this was actually this was one of the lost last things that Paul Newman did because by the time we get to Cars Two, he's gone. Uh, Paul Newman has passed away by that point, and so actually has Doc. So, okay. Next, we have. We got to talk about the comedians, though, you guys. Yeah, we got to hit the comedians. Comedians, we've, we've got probably one on. of my 
one of the cleanest ver- things that George Carlin has ever done. As Probably. More. There are none of the seven words you can't say on television included. Mm-hmm. And this is actually one of the last performances he did as well before he passed away. So we've got George Carlin as Fillmore, the pulling in basically his hippy dippy weatherman. Right, character. he's the 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 he's the VW uh, bus man. <laughs> <laughs> he does then, it great. I, although I really love him as Mister Conductor. I'm going to say that. <laughs> yes, but we've also got Cheech Marin as Ramon, Cheech from Cheech and Chong original fame. Um, probably one of the more sober things he's ever done. He also did. He also had a TV show for a while. But the comedy in this, combined with Larry the Cable Guy, there are some great, amazing comedians. And this is a funny movie, guys. This is funny. And it's funny one-liners that all these different comedians have that make it so great. Totally agree. Another big comedian, Sam. Yeah. I got to talk about Tony Shalhoub and John Ratzenberger. Actually, both of these are comedic actors. Uh, So... Tony Shalhoub plays Luigi, who has the little tire shop. He's the Italian character. My second uh, and, favorite. Yeah, he is fantastic. Now, Tony Shalhoub is just a fantastic actor and comedian. He, uh, if you've ever watched the TV show Monk, he's the star of that TV show. He is also the father in The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel and is fantastic. I mean, he's basically everything he touches turns to comedy gold, in my opinion. He's also in the um, Men in Black series as That's G- right. Yes. So he, I mean, he's just, a, he's a fantastic actor. He does this wonderful kind of silly Italian accent in, in the Cars films. And it's, it's just great. Another character who I, who I love is Mac, who is of course the Mac truck that Derek was talking about earlier that uh, lightning McQueen is supposed to be sort of traveled around in. And that voice actor is John Ratzenberger. Now, most of us know him as Cliff Clavin from Cheers. That might be a little yeah, bit. Most of us old right. people know him. Right, I was going to say that might be a little bit early for Kate, but apparently she knows it from oh, reruns. Oh, absolutely not. Mom and I used to watch Cheers all the time. There you go. So, yeah, I mean, he's also a great character, great voice. He actually does a ton of animation voices because he's got a real distinct, uh, great uh, voice actor voice i'm gonna say so yeah there, we have just a fantastic voice talent in this movie and then i know Derek wants to talk about some car racing personalities well i would say pete you've got the other character in like in radiator springs we've got lizzie yeah so oh, i yeah. she doesn't have a very big role so i think she has about six lines in the entire movie but that's Catherine hellman who People probably of our age group most know from as the um, the grandma and who's the boss. Um, she was also on Love soap her. back in the seventies, and she's done a number of other things. And isn't that Mona the mother? Mona is the name of the yeah. character, correct? Yeah. And um, she is like every line in this movie that she does is funny. It's really great. And then I'm also going to give a shout out to. Two very recognizable voices, but most people don't know the actor's name. But uh, Edie McClurg and Richard Kind play yeah. the uh, the two cars that get lost and come through town. And Lightning's like trying to convince him he's being kidnapped, and all this crazy stuff is going on. And they're and they're like, just keep driving, honey. <laughs> I love that scene. And um, and uh, Richard Kind is actually uh, in a bunch of other uh, Pixar movies, including he is Bing Bong, Bing Bong. Oh, Bing Bong. Bong. Oh, don't make me cry, oh. Pete. Let's oh, not cry. Bong. Let's not cry about Bing Bong. <laughs> yeah, let's not cry about Bing Bong. His, <laughs> untimely, his untimely passing. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, as Sam mentioned, yes, do want to talk about some of the different car and racing personalities because they take many, many individuals from auto race, the auto racing community, and bring them mm-hmm. into this story, which to me boosts the repu- reputability of this movie. We've yeah, it gives us some street cred. And we've already talked about Click and Clack. They do the, they did the car talk show on NPR. We've talked about Richard Petty. Uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. shows up. He was a NASCAR, he was NASCAR's most popular driver for years. Mm-hmm. Um, we have Mario Andretti, Mar- isn't it? Mario Andretti. We've got Michael Schumacher, who are form- who are formula former Formula One racers. They are the the Michael Schumer drives the Ferrari that, you know. 
Yes, his his <laughs> son actually currently dramatic. his son currently drives F1 as well. Yes, he does. Mick Schumacher, Michael Schumacher. Yeah, I know because I watch um, that Formula One series that's on another streaming series that was okay. a streaming platform we won't talk about. <laughs> it's like we don't talk about Bruno. We don't talk about Netflix, right? Yeah. <laughs> you said it. Oh, ah! oops, I said it. Oh, ah! oh wait, this is wrong. <laughs> wrong show. Sorry. Um, then we had as the sportscasters, we've got uh, Bob Mufasa. Costas. Say it again. We've got Bob Costas. <laughs> as who was probably one of the most recognizable voices as did the Olympics for years, did NBC stuff for years. And we've got Daryl Waltrip, who is not only a race car driver, but at the time was also a NASCAR commentator for the for Fox sports when they were doing the show. So got all sorts of car racing personalities, drivers, and there's many, many others involved that I'm not going to mention because the list, Literally, I could go on for 10, 15 minutes about all the different car racers that are in this. But we also have to talk about the incomparable Joe Ramp. Because not only was he the voice of Red, the fire truck, in this, which I think his grand total of talking is him starting breaking down into tears and crying. Um, he was also Heimlich. He was Jacques the Shrimp. In Toy Story, he was both Lenny and Wheezy. He I'm also, obsessed with Wheezy, by the way. Obsessed. He also co-wrote this movie. He co-wrote this movie. He got writing credits on Lion King, Beauty and the Beast, Oliver and Company. He actually wrote, okay, it's not a Disney movie per se, but anyone remember The Brave Little Toaster? Oh, my God. How could you forget The Brave Little Toaster? The sequels are on Disney+, Plus, but the original is not. Oh, uh -huh. really? Yeah, I didn't know that. Not, which oh, is don't worry. It'll be on Disney Plus soon. Yeah, you, I mean, funny. Anastasia's on oh, there now. I mean, oh, yeah. Disney owns Netflix. everything. <laughs> he, he wrote that one. He wrote Rescuers Down Under that we've talked about. <laughs> he wrote Toy Story that we've talked about. He wrote Bugs Life. So this was the last thing that he appeared in for Disney because he passed away actually in 2005 before this came out. But he was the driving force behind this movie and so many other classic Disney movies. Now, guys, we've talked about a lot of names. We've talked about a lot of things. I'm going to start with you, Pete, and on this one. Is this cast the best voice talent in Pixar? Wow, it's hard to argue against that because, like, we named all these names and you totally, no one mentioned Michael Keaton, who was Chick Hicks. He's Chick Hicks, yeah. And um, so I think I think there's definitely that argument. I would maybe say that Bugs Life has a better voice cast because, oh, my God, there's so many people in that movie that I love. Um, uh, Julie Louis-Dreyfus and um, uh, David Bonnie, uh, Bonnie Hunt in that. Um, uh, David gosh, Spade's in it. David, David uh, no. Yeah, yeah David, David Spade. Spade. Yeah. Not David. Is David Spade in there? I think so. He's he's Flick, isn't he? No, no, that's um. See now, What's I had I, I had this up and I scrolled Phillip. across it. No, Phillip it's the guy Phillip from the Kids that. in the Hall. Uh, David Foley. David Foley. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, David Foley's David. in there. Dennis Leary's in there. David Hyde oh. Pierce. Madeline Kahn, who's Leary. amazing. Um. Uh. Brad Ge Brad Garrett's in there. Phyllis Garrett, Diller. Roddy McDowell. Lately. Um. And it does yeah. also have Richard Kind and Edie McClure and John Ratzenberger in that movie as well. Yes, it does. So, um, but yeah. is, this, is this okay? Is this better than Bugs Life as far as the voice cast? So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to Bugs Life myself. I don't know what the rest of the group thinks, okay. but this is an amazing. This is this is really an amazing cast um, as well, though. So it's it's really a it's really a hard one to call i i think there's certainly an argument for this a lot of very excellent actors and let's say very well cast um as well i think you know there's no no missteps in this cast mm -hmm. no missteps would definitely um, agree Pete. even and you know uh, i i love mater i'm not a fan of larry the cable cable guy's comedy act but he is perfect as Mater, and uh, you know, I, I think that uh, I think that role, you know, has probably done more for him than any than anything else. Even though he was already famous before that, but uh, you know, and I, I, 
you know, I, I, I don't know. It's hard to say. What does everybody else think? Is this the best cast in your mind? Is there any other one that compares? To me, to me, the fact that they've pulled in so many individuals from the racing community, this is the best voice cast in, cast in Pixar because they pulled in all of those outside people who, in addition to all the people you know, if you're a race car fan, you also know all of those people. And that's what makes it yeah. so neat. If you're a race car yeah. fan in 2006. They, they did bring in a lot of bugs for Bugs Life, though. Mo Blank wasn't <laughs> in this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Not that Bugs. Okay. Not that Bugs. Kate, what's your thought? You were shaking Toy your head. Story, what's better? Toy Story? Really? Toy Story. Really? I just, I, like, Only the leads in Toy Story are really... No, it's a small false. cast. Big false. First of all, why am I just now finding out that Eric Von Denton was the voice of Sid? I'm a little upset that this movie <laughs> no has reason. been out you since 1995. <laughs> quote Dan and I'm still you learning that my crush, Eric Von Denton, was the voice of Sid. It's fine. But you've also, I mean, there's, so, oh my God, Don Rickles was Mr. Potato Head. Like, there's, it's so good. It's Wallace so Sean. good. Eddie Potts was Bo Peep. Eddie like, Potts, yeah. Yeah, you've even got Penn from Penn and Teller was a TV announcer. There's so. John Ratzenberger was ham. John Ratzenberger, <laughs> I will say, I have been sitting here thinking, okay, now don't get me wrong. Cars has a great cast. And I will give it to what Derek is saying, that bringing in racers like that's dope that's smart that's dope that's that's a that's a good casting call and cars is up there but in my opinion and i also have to be honest with myself that to cars didn't hit home for me and we will talk about this in a minute but um toy story is the superior movie to me and it's and so it's voice cast like i just can't mm. Listen, we're talking voice cast. So I'm going to have to disagree with my girl, Kate, right fair. above me and tell you to just sit there and be wrong in your wrongness. Toy Story <laughs> is a fantastic, fantastic movie with a fantastic Kate. with a fantastic voice cast as well. And, and I will agree with you, a superior movie overall to Cars. But Cars wins on voice cast, I think, hands down. I mean, you have just an amazing array of of actors and comedians and comedic actors and car racing personalities. And I mean, the fact that they brought Tom and Ray from NPR's car talk, uh, the fact that they get junior, you know, Dale Earnhardt jr. On, you know, in this movie for like a cameo for a voice cameo. I mean, it is just incredible. And then you have the comedic genius of George Carlin, Cheech Marin, Tony Shalhoub, John Ratzenberger, and you get Larry the Cable Guy as Mater. I mean, I just can't. It, it just does not get better. Now, I will have to say also, A Bug's Life has a great voice cast, but this one is a superior voice cast. And you have a lot of crossover, if you notice, from this cast to those other Pixar movies. So, yes, those have great actors in it too, but this has the whole array. Plus, you get all these racing people. I will say, uh, in Cars 3, Junior Johnson has a small voice role as well. Mm -hmm. And for anyone who knows about Moonshine and Moonshine Running in the South, uh, that is a that is a, a huge get for that movie. Of course, that's Cars 3, not Cars, the original. But it was just brilliant the way that they brought together all of these amazing actors and racing personalities. That's fair. And I will say I that, that to me... As I was watching this, I go, okay, that's George Carlin. Ooh, that's Cheech Marin. I didn't do that when with A Bug's Life. Mm -hmm. I didn't say, oh, that's this, that's this person, which makes me think the cast, now that may mean the story doesn't hold up as well, whatever, but the cast to me is a better voice talent. So, okay, so we have arrived in Radiator Springs. Lightning goes on trial in front of, not quite yet, Gina. Lightning has gone on trial in front of, of Doc and originally is found innocent because Doc just wants to, he's a race car, get him out of here. And Sally shows up and convinces Doc to make him fix the road, which eventually, you know, he does begrudgingly. He starts it in and Doc, he says, okay, you beat me in a race and I will do it. You know, I will fix it and you can leave. Awesome, cool, whatever. Well, the race is on dirt. And they go up, they go around, and when Lightning tries to turn left, 
he goes straight off a cliff and a cactus falls on him. One of the funnier one timers <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> you got to go turn yeah. left to go right. That's right. <laughs> uh, as you would, as you can also see in the uh, test track ride, it's turn right to go left. Oh, right to go left. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's, that is that one is of the, the inferior in rides. <laughs> yes. But in the test track, there is a, in the streets, in the signs where you know you're weaving back and forth, mm -hmm. there's a sign there that says turn right to go left. I so, did notice that. I did notice that, that just a, a couple weeks ago when I was there. So Doc wins the race because lightning can't turn on dirt. And lightning eventually begins to slowly come to terms with actually starting to kind of like some of the people. He befriends Mater, act, does one of the whole acts like he is actually his friend when he doesn't really care what Mater thinks. Well, Mater is hanging on his every word. Sally calls him on it, comes to like Sally. They end up going for a drive, which for those of you who have been to Cars Land, the drive in Radiator, and we'll talk about this in a bit, but the drive in Radiator Springs Racers is you're going over, you're going around, you go through, and then you come out that tunnel and there's the waterfall, like just like it is from the ride. And then eventually he helps fix up the town. He helps fix up the, the neon. He helps fix up. He repaves. The, yeah. the road gets completely redone. And he's got friends for the first time in his life. Because one of the things from the first, when he's heading out to California is you've got 20 tickets to give to your friends and he can think of nobody. Well, yeah. now. Yeah. He's starting to and, and to me, this is the G the, this is, I'm getting ahead of myself probably on what I'm thinking of this movie, but this is the genius of this movie is because it's a movie about a race car, but the lesson of the movie is to learn to slow down and appreciate what you have and appreciate your friends. And it's, it's to me done so well that I just, uh, you know, it kind of gets me every time I watch this movie, um, how, how well that story is. And, uh, um, part of the, that really came from, um, um, shoot now again, my, my mind's blanking out John Lasseter, uh, because mm -hmm. this movie was really his baby. He was, he's really into cars. He was really into cars. He wanted to do the story, but he also did this similar road trip with his family, uh, where he went across country and he went off the highway and went to all these little towns and everything like that. And that's why he made this story where, um, you know, he wanted to celebrate the small towns of America and everything like that. So that's kind of where the story came from. And to me, I think that's what works so well about this movie is this middle part here. I mean, I'm not saying I don't like the finale of it, but the middle part here where he is in this town and we get to know all these characters in this town and he realizes he goes from being this arrogant selfish self-centered uh you know awesome race car but not someone that you would ever want to hang out with to being more of a a, a genuine uh person and so i think genuine know, automobile well <laughs> genuine <laughs> car yeah automobile name that movie name that movie I don't oh, know. Oh, I don't know. Snake! It's from 16 Candles. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Sure. It's not from Sleepless in Seattle. It's not. <laughs> Dom, where is my There's automobile? No cars in, automobile. No cars in <laughs> Sleepless in Seattle. Uh, so, anyways, uh, you can get back to the plot. But I just, I just yeah. wanted to say that that where that came from in the movie and how, to me, how well this this part of the movie works. But and doesn't that? It bring us really nicely into talking about radiator springs and places where radiator springs exists in the real world. Yeah, it's true. Jam. <laughs> yeah. This scene behind me, I could have taken this picture in California. I swear to God, I was going to say that. It's exactly what I was going to say, Derek, that the picture that you see behind Derek, if you step into Disney's California Adventure and you turn the corner uh, kind of where the split is to go to Pixar Feet Pier or to go to Cars Land, and you look down the road into Cars Land, that is what you see right behind Derek. You are immersed in the world of Radiator Springs. There is no other land 
save, I guess, uh, now Galaxy's Edge. But Galaxy's, Galaxy's Edge came later. Uh, the the first land and is not quite as immersive, I would say, as Cars Land. But Car Cars Land immerses you in Radiator Springs, and so this only exists in Disney's California Adventure. There's three rides within uh, California Adventure. You've got uh, Tomaters. Uh, I'm going to call it his cows, but it's it's his uh, tractor something. His tractors, yeah, it's these tractors, and it's a kind of a spinning around ride, similar to. Alien Swirling Saucers in Hollywood Studios. It's the same ride, ride vehicles, just different theming, of course. You also have Luigi's F R Rollican or Frolican. I can't Rol remember. Rollican, Rollican Roadsters. Roadsters. Rod Rollican Roadsters, and it, which is a fantastic, uh, also kind of kid ride where you're in this car. It's a trackless uh, vehicle, and you dance around in the car, basically. The car dances to music, and it's got, it's got a bunch of different songs. My favorite being Hey Mambo. Um, and then there's, I know I'm making everybody dance, right? Um, and then, of course, the the marquee ride in Cars Land, which is Radiator Springs Racers that Derek described a little bit ago. You, people wait two hours to ride on Radiator Springs Racers. If you want, if you've been to Disney World, the most similar ride to it is Test Track. Yes. It's the same basic concept ride vehicles but obviously a much more superior ride in California as Radiator Springs Racers. Both the the theming, of course, there's not really the same kind of, I mean, you can't even compare the theming. And, um, and the ride is a much smoother ride. And you have a race at the end where you get to race another car to see who wins the Piston Cup. So it's a fantastic ride, fantastic land. I love it as a West Coast, Best Coast person. Uh, really, Cars Land is literally my favorite land in any Disney park anywhere that I've ever been. So it's my favorite land. It beats out Main Street USA. It beats out everything. So, But I'm yeah. going to pass to my girl, Kate, to talk about Hollywood Studios because I know that there is some kind of racing academy thingamajig at uh, Hollywood Studios. You just Studios. said a whole lot of fighting words, girlfriend. <laughs> uh -huh. She did. Listen, I got Gina. Coast, listen, Gina can drop Street. you off this because Gina is the producer and she's West <laughs> yeah, Coast Best Coast. Well, Coast. I can drop Sam. So <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, okay, listen, to be fair, since we are talking about the parks, I have only ever been to Disneyland, and the platooners know this. To those of you following along at home, I've only been to Disneyland one time, and the people I went with, I was so excited. I was like, I'm getting a first time button. I am like going all in. And the people I went with were huge party poopers, made fun of me the whole time. Oh, ruined. The I know. Seriously. I know. It was awful. So to be fair, I need to go back to Disneyland to have a way better experience because the experience I had was like real bad because uh, only because of the people I was with, not because of the park, not because of the cast members. Everything was wonderful. The people I with were so um, and it's so funny because the one thing that I wanted to experience more than anything was Radiator Springs. And we walked in and they were like, it's too long. And then we walked out and I was so, oh. I know, I know. Um, the closest thing we have to that, I am going to disagree with you just for one second, Sam, but also remember, I didn't spend very much time in Radiator Springs. So I guess I can't really disagree with you. Toy Story Land if you pay attention to the details. Oh, they have great details. Yeah. Very immersive. If you look down, there's picture, there's like giant footprints. Well, obviously it's a giant footprint because you are a toy. So if you pay attention to like the very meta details, it is very, very immersive. So no, I can't disagree with you. I think Toy Story Land was very well done, but it's not the same immersion as you get in Cars Land because if they had Agreed. made it into Andy's room, then it would be. Because it's Agreed. but because it's not a singular place like yes. Radiator Springs is yeah. a singular place, it can't totally. really be. So I'm not and, faulting and the, yeah, Disney and I think for the that. Failure, it's just, you know, if there is a failure of Batu or whatever you want to call there Star Wars Lands, it's the same thing, which is right. Let's a make place. a new place that no one's ever seen in a movie. Right. It's not and, Tatooine. And that's fair. Right. Um, I will say if you are a big Avatar fan going into Pandora, the world of Avatar, yes. I am not a huge Avatar fan. I've seen it once. 
I'm pretty sure I slept through the first hour. So <laughs> I've never I'm seen not that. a huge I fan. Actually, I actually like the movie, and I agree with you. I think that's a cool land as well. I, it's yeah. still, again, Cars Land, to me, still is the top Cars, dog. Cars in Land's number fight. one. I but, just need to go those back. are so good lands. We're going to yeah. have to have a tuner reunion at Disneyland. Yeah. So yeah. West anyway, Coast, West Coast. but it's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Um, but at Disney's Hollywood Studios, there is an experience. Um, I don't actually know. Hold on. What is the exact name of Lightning it? Lightning McQueen uh, Racing Academy. Yeah. It's terrible. I'm going to be <laughs> honest with you all. <laughs> it's real. It's real dumb. Uh, it is an easy 20 minute time kill. Literally, you go in, you sit on benches that are not comfortable there's some screens where it's like pretend like you're driving a car and then you're driving and then all of a sudden like this barrier drops and lightning mcqueen is in front of you and he's like cut you out cut you out and that that's literally it it is <laughs> it's a great time waster um a couple pre-covid uh, i want to say summer 2019 maybe 2018 2019 they did have a show um where they had about five cars dancers um that did some really cool i actually was a little jealous the choreography was dope um that was cool but if you're going to world don't waste your time unless you're <laughs> like unless you are a if, die hard if you get a if you get a kid that's a big cars fan I if think it's you have a kid that is a big cars fan you just keep getting in line mama because that's but it's it's right next to tower of terror literally and and right next to tower of terror. it's in between rock yeah. and roller coaster and tower of terror so um it used I to thought, be a parking lot I thought you it had to go no past longer. rock and roller coaster to get to it they had to go past rock you and roller do. Coaster. yeah you do you have to go down and pass rock and roller coaster um there is a, a car that's a dj i'll give you a hint as to what its name is it's dj <laughs> um i mean just it's real dumb, but if that's how you want to spend your time, I'm so sorry to anyone I have offended now. East Coast, Best Coast, that doesn't sound as good. Doesn't sound as good. East Coast, uh, East Coast. Yeah. There you go. So, so, so it's not great. This is something most people don't know, but Hollywood Studios almost got Cars Land. Mm -hmm. Literally within weeks. I of did it, not know of that. it being know announced. That within weeks of it being announced, they. That was when Lucasfilm uh, bought, or when they bought Lucasfilm, and they basically were like, "Yeah, maybe we want to do this Star Wars thing. I don't know." Did so, we open Galaxy's Edge first, or did Land? It was the same, Galaxy? basically the same, same time. But it was, time. it was, oh, okay. I think Land opened before World, but like they Within were the same month. Yeah, yeah, it was Got the it. same month. It was very yeah. close. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. Um, but yeah, they they were they were going to clone Star uh, Cars Land and put it in and put it I guess where Star Wars Land is, but um, yeah, that ended up that ended up being shelved when they decided to do Star Wars Land. So yeah, Star Which Wars is, probably makes them more money. So yeah, probably maybe I don't know. It, or it, it, it attracts I, more adults. I, to that I would I would say it tr attracts it probably attracts long term sells them more merchandise. <laughs> yeah. But yeah like, well and it and it's it's more timely because they're making more star wars movies right whereas right. cars like we've had three movies and yes they're doing these shorts but like i don't know that another movie is on the horizon yeah i wouldn't and, and they wouldn't be able to sell 200 dollar um bumper stickers lightsabers right like they yeah yeah, yeah. was was planes a branch off of cars yes yes yes, yes. but it didn't do well and a terrible branch off of cars Perfect. yeah it's it's, I just I thought so. And planes was too. What's let's even worse? <laughs> let's no, let's forget. Let's forget. <laughs> I will say. Let's go back it, to the well, actual I gonna, movie. Well, I was going to say there used to be a tie-in because before uh, Galaxy's Edge, that is the area that used to be the lights, motor, action, stunt show. <gasps> and at the and within that, Lightning McQueen would show up and would talk to the audience. So, so I did fun not know a little that. backstage tidbit for you all. A lot, not a lot. Some of the stunt performers who did lights motors action would then 
come over to Fantasmic and get overtime being our stunt performers in Fantasmic. So I got to know a whole bunch of the guys. Um, and since we're giving all the tea right now, uh, when Lights Motors Action closed, there was the moat in front of the show. Like there was like a moat thing. On its closing day, a whole bunch of cast members jumped into that moat and took their kids with them. And that's like Aww. super, super against the rules. And not only did a lot of them lose their jobs, but that used to be a ritual when it was your last show at Fantasmic that you would jump in the moat and then we couldn't do that anymore. We weren't bitter. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but I loved Lights, Motors, Action. Loved that show. Loved Lights, Motors, Action. So good. So I, I, I kind of like seeing Herbie more than Lightning McQueen, though. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> so back to the movie. Lightning is found in Radiator Springs, gets taken to Los Angeles, and they have their big last race. It's going along. Spoiler Light alert. Yeah. <laughs> if you haven't seen this in 16 years, I know, I don't I'm, for I'm, you just me I'm just so, messing with you. Going along, and you see, you know, he, Lightning gets bumped into the grass, so he has to do the turn right to do left maneuver. He's going to win by a long ways. Chick well, his his friends show up. His friends show up earlier be his crew. and be his, become his pit crew. Yeah, including Guido, who does an amazing pit stop. Pit stop. Pit stop. And Doc becomes his uh, crew chief, which he has said he doesn't need. Well, he has all his friends there, and they end up doing it for him. Last lap, Lightning is going to win by a long way. And Chick ends up wrecking the king, which if you see the wreck in that, that is actually a wreck that Richard Petty did go through. Him going up and spinning basically on his nose and tumbling a lot. That is actually essentially frame for frame a wreck that Richard Petty actually had. How in do his you know life. that? Why do you know that? Welcome I guess he's the, a car guy. <laughs> welcome to, uh, except I'm not really a car guy. Just welcome to the world of Derek's useless knowledge. <laughs> so, um, so lightning stops on the track right before the start finish line. Let's chick win goes and pushes the King across the line, showing that he has grown. He understands because doc never got to finish his last race. So he thought the King should be able to should finish yep. his it's last not race. It's not all about winning. It's not Sometimes all about, it's winning, about yes. friendship. Yep. And chick goes, no one's happy with chick with the fact that he won. Lightning gets offered the Dynaco deal and turns it down because the Rusty's guys are the ones that gave him his big break. So he decides to stick with them. But he still does get Mater the whole time had been hoping for a ride in a helicopter. And one of the last things you see is him going off in the Dynaco helicopter because Lightning arranged for it to happen because he's his friend. And yep. then... You literally see Lightning and Sally driving off into the sunset together. So it's a great ending. And then the end credit scene, which to me is one of the original end credit scenes, is where before Marvel ever did it. You guys, Marvel. yeah, Marvel, started <laughs> Marvel didn't start this. <laughs> oh, Cars sure Bueller did. Yeah, true. It's car themed remakes of all the Pixar movies with the so original funny. voice talents. They yeah. get you know, it's Tom Hanks yelling, You are a, toy, are a toy car. car. Like, <laughs> strange little bug, and you have my pity. <laughs> it's, so funny. It's such it's so and, well and, done. And then at the end, it's John Ratzenberg going, Hey, wait a minute, they're using the same voices in all these movies. Yeah. <laughs> he's the one that he recognizes all the right. voices. He's yeah. doing and his ham. He's doing, yeah, he's it's hilarious. Yeah. Now, we do have to talk about the elephant in the room. Guys, this is such a knockoff of Doc Hollywood. I it's know, but such, who cares? Who well, cares? But to me, that does make a difference because Doc Hollywood, a guy from the big city, goes to a Michael town. J. Fox. It's Michael J. Fox. Yeah, he goes to a small town. He destroys Doc's property. It ends up being his fence. He ends up having to stay there to fix it. He ends up falling for someone. He goes back to the big city, realizes it's not for him, and goes back to this small town, small town and, and the girl he loves. Yep. So my question then, Kate, I'm going to throw this one to you. 
not did you like the movie? Does the movie hold up after 16 years? All right. I'm going to throw myself under the bus on this and say, I don't know what Doc Hollywood is. <laughs> and I hate, listen, I don't do that very often. Not very often no. do I say, I don't know what you guys are talking about. That was that a, that I've taken it was that a movie. movie. It it's was a movie. not an animated It was a Michael movie. J. Fox no, movie. Michael J. Fox. Oh, okay. Late 80s. Movie. Michael J. Fox pre or post Back to post. the Future. Post. Okay. Late See, 80s. See, I've seen Back to the Future. I've I'll, seen Back like, to the Future. Have you seen all Secret of, of My Success? It's around the same time as that movie. Okay. Came out. <laughs> so, all right. I've put a lot of thought into this particular question. Yeah, sure. It holds up. It, yeah. It holds up. Um, I don't, if I'm scrolling through, which I don't, I, I pretty much stream everything now, but if I was scrolling through channels, and I saw that Cars was on, I wouldn't stop and watch it. If I saw that Toy Story was on, I would stop and watch it. It's kind of like my my mom and I have actually had this talk. Um, if I'm ever scrolling through channels and Apollo 13, the movie Apollo 13 is on, yep. you stop and watch it because you have to make sure that they make it home. <laughs> like wherever it is in the movie, you stop what you're doing and you watch it. Sleepless in Seattle. You've got to make sure that they they meet up in the end. Hello. But Cars, I would put it in the top five Pixar movies. But this isn't a movie. Like, I had to, like, I had to talk myself into watching this for, for The Vault this week. It was, it's not a movie that I'm like, absolutely freaking lutely Let's sit down and watch this right now. So does it hold up better than the Sandlot? Sure. And I gave <laughs> the Sandlot a five. But there's parts in the Sandlot that are like. <sighs> but there isn't a part in this movie that makes me go. <sighs> but is it something that I will choose to watch when I just want to laugh and feel good? Probably not. Does that answer that question? It does. <laughs> Ahead, um, I, I think I do agree to the question of does the movie hold up? I think it does. Um, the Cars franchise as a whole, in my opinion, is not particularly quality. Um, I think once you get past this movie, the other Cars movies are okay, but not great. Uh, obviously, we talked about the Planes movies, and those are pretty uh, um, pretty close to awful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I actually haven't seen the second planes movie, so I shouldn't, I shouldn't slag on it. But the first one was, was, was literally, a, you know, you talk about a remake. It was literally a remake of this movie. This movie. <laughs> and oh, so yeah. if this movie, uh, lightning was, was afraid of racing. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 But um, uh, I do, I do like some of the shorts that they've done. The Mater shorts are pretty funny. Um, and again, the, the, the area in Hollywood studios, but this, uh, to me, this franchise in general rapidly degraded to a main, their main purposes to selling toys. Um, but with this movie, I do genuinely think there was a lot of heart and a lot of, um, you know, a uh, um, lot of talent behind it. And so I really do think this holds up. I still think it's great to watch as an adult. And I think it's especially great for, for kids. So. Yep, still holds up. Yeah. So I'm going to um, tell Pete, as a lawyer, answer only the question you are asked. <laughs> <laughs> if I was representing him in a deposition, that's what I would tell him. I'm a because podcaster. He... <laughs> I never answer the question I was asked. <laughs> Fair enough. So I'm going to say the question, does the movie hold up, is a resounding yes. Absolutely. This is a fantastic movie. Um, I, I, I obviously like it more than Kate liked it. Um, I will, cause I will stop and watch this if it's on, <laughs> this is one of those movies. Uh, I also love whenever I hear life is a highway, the, the remake, the one from this movie, Rascal Flatts Flat. version. Yeah. yeah it's, if it comes on in the car, I swear to God, you guys, I am rocking out and singing along to that then song. Again, Sam, you and I also grew up with the original. True. We did. We absolutely did. So this, so I will say that this, uh, this movie came out in 2006. My son was born in 2013. 
And he did not obviously see this in the movie theater. He saw it for the first time, you know, on television. Um, And he was obsessed with this movie, I would say, from like, I don't know, 2014, 2015, 2016, like for several years, because it was so good. And the first movie that he saw in a movie theater is Cars 3, actually. So, you know, it was after Cars 2. Yeah, it was in Cars 3 was his first. It was, I think he was like three or four when we took him to, I think probably four when we took him to his first movie in the theater. That's so funny. The first movie um, I saw in theaters was The Sandlot. You're welcome. <laughs> there you go. I you were going to say Sleepless in Seattle. And, and and while while Cars three and uh, is certainly no Cars one, um, and Cars two isn't even a Cars three. Let me put it that way. Um, <laughs> Cars is a fantastic movie. I will watch it again and again. I adore it. I as as we talked about, the voice actors are fantastic. The one liners are hilarious. Uh, it holds up. It doesn't have any of the, you know, sexism and sexual assault type issues that are present in the Sam Lod Kate. Um, <laughs> so, you know, this is this is a movie that I think can also withstand the test of time, at least maybe the modern times. So I, I, I think it's a great movie. And to answer the question, yes, resounding. Yes. Derek. Yeah, it holds up. I mean, it's. There is nothing to be upset about in this movie, realistically. Um, And to me, that's what makes the movie hold up. I have literally probably seen this movie a thousand times. Seriously. Yes, seriously. My son, for a period of years, this was on at least once a day. Same. That's, uh, I mean, it's, and, and this is, and yeah. this is years apart, you guys, because Derek's yeah. son is a lot boy. older than my son. That's, that's what makes it, yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. My daughter, who is 19 years old, who also did not see this in the theater, did go through a period where she watched this movie and we had Carter's Toys too. She went through go. a period of time where she, we okay. watched this movie. So Thanks. I've probably seen it a hundred times, maybe not a th- <laughs> she, she didn't go probably quite as long she would go through phases with with the different movies but like you know okay but that tells have- you like as far as the different ages too like how it has held up um you know over time because right. you're talking about pete's 19 year old you're talking about derek how old is your son 14. he's like four yeah 14 and my son is eight so like that's a big range of kids who went through this movie okay yeah. but hold on though hold on because i'm 34 34 um, when Finding Nemo came out, I watched that movie repeat. I mean, I watched it uh-huh. every day. And that, uh-huh. and I want to say that came out when I was in high school. When Lilo and Stitch, that's not Pixar. But when Lilo and Stitch came out, I watched that movie. I was obsessed with Stitch. Is that, was Cars maybe just not my You were age? too old, to be perfectly honest. Okay. You, were, you were too old yeah, and you were yeah, a girl. You, yep. Because you were too I old, have, I'd say. Because Toy Story came out in 95. So I was eight when Toy Story came out. But also remember, with Toy Story, you had to watch it on VHS. We didn't even have DVDs at that point. At least, uh, let me rephrase. My family did not have DVDs at that point. My my daughter went went through Nemo also. She was was born the week before Nemo was released. Because that that was the first movie my wife and I saw after she was born in the theaters. So and she's a big animation person too, right? Well, he, well, yeah, she she's is, studying she is animation, now. I don't think right? she knew yeah. she was going to be, but um, right. so, so maybe she went, she went through, know. you know, we saw, we saw Nemo four or 500 times probably. Um, so I can, I can list the movies that she got into at one point mm-hmm. or another, but cars was one of them. And it, it, it is definitely a boy leaning movie because again, cars and, you know, trucks and all those things tend to be more popular with boys. I mean, they, they just are, but it just happened that, uh, you know, my daughter uh, enjoyed the movie too. And we had, I mean, we didn't have all the cars toys, but we had a uh, lightning McQueen. They had a figure eight waste racetrack and we had the Mack truck where the thing folded open and had all the stuff inside of it. it. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. we had a couple, we had a couple of cars things and you that know, she would feel a little bit better knowing that. And that Kate, I... yeah. Kate, it's also one of those, like my mom used to run a home daycare at that period of time. It was little mermaid. There was, they would show uh, yep. kids would watch a little mermaid every yep. day. 
So I think it's a Disney thing of overall Disney movies connect so deeply that kids just want to immerse themselves in them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that, but that's always kind of my judgment is especially, you know, with a lot of these older movies is like my daughter would get into them and watch them repeatedly. Uh, and that really told me the quality of a movie because like when she watched attack of the clones over and over again, I realized how awful that movie is. And this was one, this was a movie that was like, wow, this movie is actually really good. Cause I can stand watching it over and over yeah. again. Huh? So. <laughs> okay. As we always do when we watch a movie, some series like this, we give it, Cups of Pixie Dust out of five. Kate. Three. Okay. I'm going to give it a four. Four. And guys, I'm going to give it a rare five for me. What? Oh. I love that, Derek. I uh -huh. love that. What? It's a five for me. Yes. It, I mean, to be able to not go crazy after, and to be able to say, no, son, we're going to watch something else, but it'd be okay. It's cars. Fine. Yeah. It's, and to watch it thousands yeah. of times. No, I get is it, it. Is it the yeah. best? Is it the best one I've given a five to? No, but it is a five for me. I'll be honest. I was debating a four and a half, but I, I feel like, you know, I okay. watched it so many times that actually might have run it down to a four. <laughs> Even though I, I, I love I love this movie, but it's just, you know, just repetitive. That can the happen thing. sometimes too. I get yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. I, and and here's the thing. Like, there's not really much wrong with this movie. No. Yeah, exactly. There, you know, I mean, we talked about all the pluses to this movie, but if I if I look at it, I mean you can say, yeah, it's it, it the story is Doc Hollywood. No, no kid's gonna go. Oh no, I can't watch it because yeah. exactly. <laughs> they don't know. Because it was in a Michael J. Fox movie, <laughs> similar to it. So you know, there's, there's. I mean, it's funny. It's there's, there's heart to it. There's a good story. There's, I mean, there's just, and, and you know, I said all the actors and everything. Like, w what's really wrong with it? So I, I can't. Well, I wouldn't give it a five. Wrong. I can't argue with it. You know, yeah, I can't argue with you either. Next week. We are going to be watching, there's a new series out from Lucasfilms called Light and Magic. We are going to be looking at episodes one and two, which is basically how Industrial Light and Magic was founded and their work through the original Star Wars series. So it's two episodes. They're about 45, 50 minutes long each. And we're not going to watch all six episodes right now. But guys, is after, as you are listening and watching along, if you want us to look at the other four episodes, I've actually watched the first four. Oh my so goodness! If guys, so if you guys, if you guys want us to watch the next episodes, let us know. Email us at plusplatoon at gmail .com. Message us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. We are there. It's all plus platoon. And guys, with that. It's been a great week. Hope you, everyone has an amazing, magical week. And we will see everybody next Thursday. Bye, guys. All right. I am Bye. Speed. Bye. Catch out. Stop. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Plus Platoon. Be sure to subscribe to the Plus Platoon podcast to keep getting great content each week. Then head over to Apple Podcast and leave those five-star reviews as they help make the Plus Platoon visible to even more Disney Plus fans. Also, go to YouTube and like and subscribe to the Plus Platoon channel where you can watch all future episodes live. If you have a question for the Plus Platoon, please send us an email to plusplatoon at gmail.com or connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Plus Platoon. The Plus Platoon is a Disney Plus fan podcast and is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company or the Disney Plus streaming service. All opinions expressed on the show are solely those of the individual hosts and in no way reflect the views of the Walt Disney Company. Thanks for watching and be sure to stay tuned for next week's episode because the Plus Platoon is to be continued. Continued.